Hello, my name is Katie Lucarelli. In this video, we'll discuss trauma of the anterior segment. This video was created in collaboration with my mentor, Dr. Daniel Kanak. All photos are from the American Academy of Ophthalmology unless otherwise specified. We'll review corneal abrasion, corneal foreign body, and subconjunctival hemorrhage. We'll describe the presenting signs and symptoms and practice making a differential diagnosis based on history and exam. We will briefly touch on initial management and urgency of referral for these diagnoses as well. Let's try a case. A six-year-old boy with pain and blurry vision is brought in by his mom. Earlier that day, while playing with his brother, he had sand thrown at him. Mom looked for sand particles in his eye, but she didn't find any. He tells you, it still hurts right now, and things look a little fuzzy. It feels like something is in there. So what should be on your initial differential? You should definitely include corneal abrasion, as well as corneal foreign body. You might also consider corneal ulcer or even acute anterior uveitis. With this history, you examine the patient. Preparacane drops provide instant pain relief and help facilitate your exam. Visual acuity in the left eye is decreased and the pupil is constricted. There is moderate conjunctival injection and the corneal light reflex is disrupted. Your visualization of the fundus is limited. With suspicion, you decide to do a fluorescein exam, which is a test that uses an orange dye and blue light to detect foreign bodies or irregularities on the surface of the cornea. Any abnormalities on the surface will be stained by the dye and appear green under blue light. Your findings appear similar to this photo on the right. As you likely deduced, this patient with an acute painful red eye and a history of trauma has a corneal abrasion. This is basically a scratch on the outside layer of the eye. One clue is that patient's pain is relieved instantly with preparacane. They usually have mild to moderately decreased visual acuity and the sensation of a foreign body, as well as tearing or redness. Treatment is with antibiotic ointment or drops, but steroids are contraindicated. Contact lens wearers should not wear them during recovery. If your patient doesn't experience improvement after 24 to 48 hours or they had more than mild trauma, they should be referred to a specialist. Corneal foreign body was the second item on the differential for this case. These present similarly to corneal abrasions and they occur via the same mechanisms. Sometimes there are not obvious signs that a foreign body has been sustained, so it's important to obtain an accurate history from the patient. Sharp perforations might not cause redness and the patient's vision might be normal. One important point about corneal foreign bodies is that they can be indicators of intraocular foreign bodies. You should suspect an intraocular foreign body if a patient presents with a red eye and a history of metal on metal, such as grinding or hammering. This patient may need imaging with an orbital x-ray or a maxillofacial CT to further evaluate for an intraocular foreign body. Finally, you should always rule out open globe before manipulating the eye. Corneal foreign bodies require urgent evaluation and referral for expedient removal. Without removal, superficial foreign bodies can become embedded more deeply over time and if they penetrate across the cornea, they can become an intraocular foreign body. Intraocular foreign bodies can also occur at the time of injury, as we discussed in the last slide. Retained foreign bodies can cause scarring that can ultimately lead to vision loss. It goes without saying that only trained professionals should attempt foreign body removal. However, I'll outline the process here. It's useful to use a topical anesthetic such as preparacane. Make sure to also look for conjunctival foreign bodies, and if you find one, use a cotton-tipped applicator to pick it up. For superficially retained foreign bodies, you can use an irrigating solution to dislodge them. However, if the foreign body is embedded more deeply, it may require instruments for removal. Pictured here at the bottom of the slide is a characteristic rust ring that occurs with embedded iron foreign bodies. These can be removed with an ophthalmic drill. However, if the rust is deep, sometimes it's safer to leave it in place. You can consider debridement if the epithelium is slow to heal. Let's do another case. 
A 52-year-old woman presents with an irritated red eye and frank blood. She sustained a single car motor vehicle crash in which she struck her head on the forehead of the steering wheel but had no loss of consciousness. She has no visual loss. What's on your initial differential? You should first include subconjunctival hemorrhage. Another consideration could be traumatic hyphema. This might be a secondary hemorrhage due to a neoplasm. Finally, it's important not to miss an open globe. On exam, the patient has normal visual acuity, normal pupils, and intact extraocular movements. The conjunctiva has one sector that's obscured by frank blood. The rest of her exam has a normal fundus and normal intraocular pressure. This patient has a subconjunctival hemorrhage. This is when capillary rupture causes rapid accumulation of blood in the potential space between the conjunctiva and the sclera. These mostly occur spontaneously with increased intraocular pressure caused by sneezing, straining, or coughing. They can occur less commonly in patients with severe hypertension or those on anticoagulants. Patients experience irritation but not significant pain and their vision is normally unaffected. It's important to remind patients that these are self-limited and will usually resolve over days to weeks depending on the size. They are scary looking but benign. However, the traumatic variety can be associated with open globe and so they need further investigation for ocular trauma. Patients with subconjunctival hemorrhage associated with trauma, like the one in case two, may have a more serious ocular injury. If your exam reveals significant hemorrhage that extends 360 degrees around the cornea, you should have a high suspicion for a possible open globe, and the patient may require surgical exploration. As always, if there's any possibility of open globe, use extreme care when manipulating the eye. In this video, we reviewed several common manifestations of eye trauma. You should know that an acute, painful red eye, foreign body sensation, and positive fluorescein exam is concerning for a corneal abrasion or corneal foreign body. Frank blood and a bright red eye that happened suddenly is likely a subconjunctival hemorrhage. Atraumatic subconjunctival hemorrhages are not urgent and are likely to resolve on their own, whereas a foreign body requires urgent removal. If a patient comes in with a traumatic 360 degree subconjunctival hemorrhage, they will likely require emergent surgical exploration. If you take away only one point, remember that it is crucial to rule out globe rupture before ever manipulating the eye. Thank you very much for listening.